education, it touches nearly every American household because taxpayers foot the bill. Yet rarely is it a top priority for voters, the way it became in the Virginia governor's race. As school board controversies heat up here and around the country, Republican Glenn Youngkin made it his closing argument, making gains in key groups that helped put him over the top. As expected, a close race, although Youngkin's decisive win. Fox News is calling the Virginia governor's race for Republican Glenn Youngkin. Came as a surprise even to some members of his own party. The political newcomer winning the day against establishment Democrat and former governor Terry McAuliffe. In a state, Joe Biden carried by 10 points just one year ago. Joe Biden will win Virginia's 13 electoral votes. Voters like former Democrat Michelle Mej explains what made the difference for her. I did not think that Terry McAuliffe was listening to anyone other than maybe a very small uh, cohort of people that agreed with him on every issue. Polls show Yunkin made solid inroads across party lines with women in suburban battlegrounds like Northern Virginia. Lifelong Democrat Emily Curtis never voted Republican until now. He was running a unifying campaign. He was he was bringing people together. He said he wanted the forever Trumpers and the never Trumpers. Well, many voters say they liked the campaign's positive messages, a promise to end sales tax on groceries and to cut business regulations. Most agree education proved to be Yunkin's secret sauce. Whatever agenda is going on, uh, we need to understand what our rights are, how we can, how easy it is to lose your freedoms. And uh, at the for forefront there was education. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. That now infamous statement during the last debate ended up infuriating parents on both sides of the aisle. About half of Virginia voters say they should have significant say in what their children are taught. Paula Kunwar cast her first vote in an American election for Yunkin. I have a real issue. I have a non-verbal child. I'm, I'm my children's parent, number one. We'll, we will work together. But you're not even my co-parent. I am. I am my child's parent, and I decide what they will be educated on. As backlash spread like wildfire in the state against curriculum, cancel culture, and pornography in school books. We went through this whole debacle with Dr. Seuss not being uh, on available. However, when it comes to books that have actual pictures of things that I cannot describe, um, that's okay. Youngkin tapped into parents' frustration. My children's constitutional rights must be protected. That also included school closures and remote learning. I don't think people always realize just how bad Virginia was. We were number 44 out of 50 states. Um, in terms of reopening. Kay Greenwell, an independent who leans Democrat, voted straight red in November. I voted a straight red ticket this time, and I'm not afraid to say it because I was so angry and so frustrated. I don't think the Democrats get it, uh, why we voted the way we did, and they're choosing to focus on extreme positions. Many parents were also happy to hear this. Under a Youngkin administration, no mask mandate. In the current set of data that we see today, no mask mandate. I believe that you do your research and you consent to whatever you want to do. I don't believe in mandate. With midterms now less than a year away, many believe the race is the clearest snapshot yet of voter attitudes in Virginia and beyond. I feel like my party is going too far left. They're, they're leaving me. And um, I will remain a Democrat. I want them to come back to the center. Meanwhile, as pundits try to make sense of Yunkin's unlikely win, backlash continues here in the Old Dominion and elsewhere as parents fume about what's being taught to their children and demand local school boards give them a seat at the table. In Loudoun County, Virginia, I'm Tara Mergener, CBN News.